wars cost money, and this requirement is going to make the Continental Congress and the in the future United States government rack up enormous debts. North America has very little gold and, and silver to pay for for its funds. Uh, for example, you know we're really not going to have much silver in the in the economy until we get part, you know, all the way into into the, into the West uh, when it comes to silver deposits. So we don't have that much. We're not blessed with a lot of gold and silver uh, in the areas that uh, we consider the United States at this time. Uh, so we borrow and we issue bonds, we pledging repayment. We also are going to print money. We're going to print money in the tune of $250 million. And this is going to be absolutely worthless since it had no value outside of good faith. Nothing is backing it. Uh, it's it Basically, it says the only reason why you accept any dollars uh, when, it com when it comes to money is that, you know, number one, it's printed on it. And number two, you're going to accept uh, that amount of of revenue of, of services or goods uh, in proportion to whatever paper, piece of paper you're going to receive. So in 1781, the national debt was a hundred I'm sorry, was eleven million dollars. But if in a few within a few years, it's going to be twenty-eight million dollars. And Congress is going to have to issue new securities to settle claims uh, by soldiers and civilians. Uh, so these fiscal problems of the Confederation are going to make uh, make it discredited by people that are thinking more nationally. They're more than by nationalists. So the con you know, the Congress is going to turn to a man named Robert Morris. He's a Philadelphia merchant and the richest man in the United States. He's appointed in a position known as the Superintendent of Finance for the Confederation government. And he wanted to have Congress assume the payment of the national debt. Well, the only way that Congress could do that is if it had a power to tax. Uh, and, and so basically what Morris wanted to do was have a tariff on imported goods, a 5% tariff. The problem is going to be this is a power that the federal government does not have. There's no mentioning of uh, the power to tax in the Articles of Confederation. So we need to start the amendment process. And so what does he do? He goes and he writes up an amendment giving the power of tax, power to the tax, to the federal government. This is where you start running into problems. Ratification, as I said earlier, is it requires every single state to say yes. If one state says no, guess what? You're not doing it. Uh, and so all, when Morris presents his his, uh, his amendment in order to uh, reform the government, in order to give him the power to tax, every single state says yes, except for Rhode Island. And Rhode Island, the reason why is because Rhode Island is going to rely on foreign trade. So if you tax foreign trade, you're severely going to, uh, sorry, you're going to severely affect the economy of Rhode Island. And anytime, it's an old adage: the, if you, you know, if you want something less of it, something less, you need to tax it. Tax something more, and you're going to get less of it. Uh, and so Morris listens to the concerns, and a couple of years later, he presents another amendment in order uh, to. Uh, give the power of tax to the uh, to the federal government, and this time Rhode Island says yes. The problem is that New York says no, and therefore uh, the national tariff is going to be a failure. Uh, and so Robert Morris is going to basically resign from his position, and this is going to be a major blow to the credibility of the Articles of Confederation.